In today's video, I'm going to be making some changes to the lighting rig in my Western Green Lizard enclosure, then discussing the significance of these changes. The thoughts expressed in this video will be applicable to all species, however. Righty-o chaps, so what we're going to be doing in today's video is doing some lighting upgrades for the Western Green Lizards. Uh, you can probably just about see the male there, if I just uh, change the brightness a little bit, there he is on uh, the basking platform right there. Um, but basically what we're going to be doing is I've got that R7 halogen there and I want to change that out for some other stuff. I'll walk you through it in a minute but basically all I'm going to be doing is taking that light out and then doing some other things and then I'll discuss why I've done it and why it's an important and a beneficial change. Now the first thing to do before I start carrying out inside vivarium maintenance is to catch the lizards so they're not in the way of the drill or any of that noisy stuff which might upset them. And uh, I don't know how catching them's going to go to be honest with you. Right, let's get all these lights back on, shall we? Is looking good. Go on then. Back home. It's pretty nice in there, shall we? Go on. Done. Looks like she might eat that mealworm. Yeah, so um Okay, I take it back. They weren't that bothered about being stuck in the box for a couple of hours. <laughs> but um basically um you'll notice the glass is really dirty. I've oh he's just moved. Uh, I've done some changes and things. I will let these fellas um get on with it and then I'll clean the glass and things and I'll come back tomorrow and we can see how they are doing. Before we run through the lamps, you must understand this one principle. Sunlight consists of different wavelengths which we can assign to the categories Infrared B, Infrared A, Visible Light, UVA and UVB. It is the role of our lamps to replicate both the composition of the radiation in sunlight, so the relative amounts of Infrared B, Infrared A, Visible Light, UVA and UVB, and its intensity, so the dose of infrared B, infrared A, visible light, UVA and UVB. Only when we have achieved this can we be sure that our reptiles can perform all metabolic functions associated with sunlight and thermoregulate properly. The first lamp to come on of a morning and the last to go off of an evening, as is timed by my automatic timers, is the tungsten halogen lamp. People get confused when I say tungsten halogen lamp, so to narrow it down, a tungsten halogen lamp is any of those lamps which casts orange light and is not an LED, fluorescent or carbon filament lamp. 
These lamps are the same as the ones that were commonly used to illuminate houses before LEDs took over. These lamps are the best we have available for producing a composition of infrared A and B which approaches that encountered in sunlight. They also offer some visible light which is what you can see, and they produce a small quantity of UVA. The new lamp I've put in, a 50 watt lamp by Arcadia, is the same in its function as the tungsten halogen lamp I removed, so you might be wondering why I bothered changing it out. You will understand that composition and intensity are two different things. Because both the new lamp and the old one are tungsten halogen lamps, the composition of radiation they offer, i.e. the ratio of visible light to infrared A to infrared B they produce, will be more or less the same. However, the old lamp, which was 70 watts, floodlit a huge area, whereas the new 50 watt lamp illuminates a tiny area in comparison. Let's say that the old lamp lit an area of 30 by 30 centimetres, so 900 centimetres squared, and that the new one lights an area of 15 by 15 centimetres, so 225 centimetres squared. This means that, in total, the intensity of radiation from the old lamp was 70 divided by 900 equals approximately 0.078 watts per centimetre squared, whereas that offered by the new lamp is 50 divided by 225 equals approximately 0.22 watts per centimetre squared. Or in other terms, the intensity due to the new lamp is about 2.9 times greater than that offered by the old lamp. These are only very sketchy and very rough calculations, which don't quite illustrate everything I have in mind, but they should serve the purpose of making me point about the intensity of radiation. The question remains, what intensity should we be aiming for? The purpose of our tungsten halogen lamps is, once again, to supply infrared A and infrared B. It also offers some visible light, as stated earlier, but such a low intensity compared to what is offered by sunlight that it will have little impact. We should like to be able to measure the intensity of infrared A and B given by our tungsten halogen lamp using a handheld device in the style of a luxmeter or solarmeter 6.5, but unfortunately a device specifically designed for this purpose doesn't exist. We are, however, looking into how we might be able to use another device already on the market to obtain the measurements we're after, although it is still too early for me to give advice on this at the moment. For the time being, then, the only way we can get an idea of the intensity of infrared from our tungsten halogen lamp without any calculation is to hover our hand under the lamp and feel how warm it is. It should feel gently warm, but not hot you should be able to leave your hand under it for many minutes without it becoming uncomfortable. It is important to note that if you are going to perform this test, you must do it with all of the lamps in the enclosure switched off, as the other lamps will also contribute to feelings of warmth and or discomfort, as I will touch on in a moment. Now having done this simple test, I felt that the old lamp was not intense enough for me western green lizards, hence why I wanted to change it out. With all this talk of areas and intensity, it's important that I point out that the area lit by the lamp should still be large enough for the reptile to fit most of its body under. For lizards, I would define this as being all of the body minus the tail, although if you can fit the tail in as well, that's even better. For tortoises, this area's got to be the whole body, and for snakes, the whole body coiled up. Clearly it would be useless to have the right intensity, but only over the area of a pinhead. Moving on, we have a similar story with the provision of visible light by the LEDs. I did already have a 3 foot jungle dawn LED bar in this enclosure, and this lamp offers one heck of a lot of visible light, but it's spread over an enormous area. There's a lot of light, but it doesn't come close to being as intense as sunlight. This is where the big spot LED by Millin comes in. In total, this spot LED offers less visible light than the Jungle Dawn, but it's concentrated over a much smaller area to produce visible light intensities getting close to mid-morning sunlight. What is the point of this, you ask? It's just visible light, right? It surely doesn't really matter that much. Well, actually, it does. Visible light does actually warm things up. 
You can't feel the effect under a lamp like a jungle dawn because the visible light is far too diffuse, but under a spot LED like the one I've got, you can feel your hand getting warm if you slip it underneath. Now, different wavelengths warm things up in different ways, so if we don't offer sunlight-like visible light intensities to our herbs, they won't be able to warm up as they would in nature. Additionally, visible light cannot be underestimated as a stimulant for basking, and I am fairly convinced that there are metabolic interactions between herbs and visible light that we don't yet understand, something I'll talk about in the future. With all this being said, an intense visible light source like this is only necessary for diurnal species. Crepuscular species, as you might expect, do not naturally encounter such intense visible light and consequently, a more diffuse, linear LED is entirely suitable for such species. Indeed, just the visible light given by the tungsten halogen lamp and that offered by the fluorescent lamps we'll discuss in a minute might well be enough. Also, in case you're wondering, I do feel that we should still be using a linear lamp like the jungle dawn I've got, with diurnal sun-seeking species, because it'll provide good background illumination for plant growth and will reduce the enormous contrast that would be set up in the enclosure without it. You will also notice that I do have some warm white LEDs dotted about the enclosure, but these are more for aesthetics of an evening and early morning than anything else. On a separate note, you might be wondering why it is that I've got the spot LED and tungsten halogen lamp on an angle, as it's normally suggested that lamps should always be vertical for safe use. While I agree with this in general, I don't think it paints a full picture, which is another thing I'll come back to in an upcoming video. The third lamp type we have in this enclosure is fluorescence. These lamps offer a small amount of diffuse visible light, some UVA and some UVB. It's the UVB that we're most interested in here, because we understand why it is important for the synthesis of vitamin D3, and have a way of measuring it using a solometer 6.5. These devices measure UVB in units of the UV index, or UVI. I have two T5 6% output UVB tubes in this enclosure, timed separately alongside the other lamps in the enclosure, as shown in this diagram. The effect of this timing is that the UV indices at the basking spot ramp up throughout the day, from 0 in the early morning and late evening, to 4 to 6 mid-morning and mid-afternoon, and then right up to 7 to 10 at the middle of the day. These are really quite high UV indices, one might suggest, but these lizards of mine really seem to enjoy it. They become most active when both fluorescent lamps are on simultaneously. I have encountered wild lacertas, actually Podarchus muralis, the common wall lizard, a fairly close relative of my western green lizards, basking at the top of a mountain in southern Spain. I didn't have a solar meter with me at the time to measure the UV indices, but I can tell you that if you didn't have a um, Factor 50 sun cream up there, you would be baked to a crisp in not very long. Going from other people's data about UV intensities up Spanish mountains, I will guess that the UV indices here would have been about 7 or 8. A word of caution here though. If your enclosure isn't as well decked out as mine, your reptiles won't have as good opportunity to regulate their exposure to the UVB, and the last thing you want to do is force them to be exposed to very intense UVB for prolonged periods. Seriously. Don't mess about risking overexposure. Another point about the timing of my lamps is that infrared peaks earliest and drops off latest, then visible light, then UV, as would happen in nature. You will notice that there is no dedicated UVA provision here, and that is a sorry thing. We know virtually nothing about how UVA interacts with reptiles or indeed other animals, and therefore there hasn't been a push to make lamps offering UVA in tailored amounts, so for the time being, UVA provision remains guesswork at best. And so with that, we can actually draw this video to a close. I really do hope that you have enjoyed this video with the Western Green Lizards. They are, just to wrap up really, um, absolutely fantastic little lizards. I really love them and uh, with this new basking spot it just shows them off in all their glory. I mean they aren't even looking the best at the minute. The female's looking alright but she's still very much in a juvenile coloration. Um, she'll end up um, about the same colour and pattern as the male is now. And uh, the male 
will probably lose all his stripes and get some more blue on his chin. Um, but at the minute, he's actually looking pretty rubbish because he's in shed. I'm just about to film like the final outro, but like if I focus on my face and you can see the colour, then you can see absolutely nothing there because it's so bright. But if I focus there... <laughs> Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye, guys.